The gunshots on the block gotta stop. Street light. The gunshots. Today, as part of the efforts to make sure that we are part of the solution, Unwrapped Talent Teen Open Mic and Showcase is not just here at the Peace Palace of the People to present the gifts, skills, talents, and abilities of our teens, young adults, but we are employing all of the adults here in the city of Chicago, all organizations, all community groups, all political, economic, social, religious or spiritual organizations and affiliations that we must collaborate together in a strategic way so that we can deal with the values of issues that plague our communities and our neighborhoods. So I want to start off by first saying that even though Brother Enoch Muhammad is a co-creator of Hip Hop Detox, which is a public health organization, I know that we do not have a silver bullet that's going to solve all of our city's problems. We have many people in our communities that are offering parts of the solution, but this can only be sustained if we work in a strategic way to take those of like minds and like hearts, and we work to touch the hearts and minds of those who reside in our neighborhoods. So I want to not introduce, but I want our pastor and our brother, Father Flager, to start off with just giving some remarks regarding the need for this unity, not just with the youth and those who are on the street so-called gangs or cliques or those different um, persons who are at odds with each other, but starting off with the adults and those of us who work in the community, we need to have associations and ways that we work together so that we can sustain our efforts. So, Father Flager. Thank you, Brother Enoch. I first just want to thank uh, Brother Enoch for calling us to come together and work in a unity and work in a oneness. Um, it is just crazy for us to call brothers on the street to not be rivals and not be divided over turf while we adults live with turf amongst us. You know, Muslims, Christians, Jews, um, different churches, different organizations, west side, south side. It's time to end all that. It's time to end our turfdom so that we can then be a witness to the young people rather than tell them to do one thing that we're not doing ourselves. So we have to come together. The issues before us, children dying in our streets, um, unemployment, education. When we look at the issues out here that's killing our communities and killing our future, we have to learn that we have to come together as brothers and sisters, as adults, mm -hmm. join forces together, join our hearts together, join our programming together. We, everybody doesn't have to be doing the same thing. We can share, re, uh, give, uh, give a reference to one another, support one another. And, and then when we come together in unity, uh, then we can demand a positive, whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's the way we, our behavior on the streets. We cannot put any demands together of an expectation or a standard unless first we set a standard by our unity. So I just call all people, all organizations, all faiths, all different groups, let's come together, let's show our oneness, let's have that one heart to, for ourselves, and then let's call our young people to follow rather than be the ones to have to lead it. Thank you. We started off with that which many consider religious, but we say spiritual because religious game banging is not going to work today. Right. And just as religious game banging is not going to work, we've seen how political game banging does not work. If we say that politics is a process that determines who gets what, when, where, and how, yet every community has needs mm -hmm. where all citizens need to have basic things met, whether it's education, hospitalization, health, et cetera, then we have to find ways where we can work with those who are in the political realm and have them connected with those from every aspect or spectrum or walk of life in our city. So without further delay, I want to make sure that we get our older woman, Latasha Thomas, an opportunity to speak on what we need to do and what we must continue to do, which is working on our collective unity. Please give our older woman a hand. Thank you, Brother Enoch, and I, uh, uh, I'm just, I'm happy to see that the community gets together and the adults are getting together. Uh, thank you, Father Mike, for um, s putting us together with uh, Brother Enoch, because as a community, and this is my community, I grew up here, so before being a, uh, an elected official, before anything else, this is my community, and if we're not working together, 
then we will never solve anything. We can't wait for someone else to do it. We have to do it ourselves. And we can't uh, teach our young adults and youth something that we're not doing ourselves. So we've got to come together. I like this. We've got different opinions, different ways to bring our voices out. And if we can come together doing all of those things, then it's a positive. It's a positive for our community. And it's a way to teach our youth how to do things better, how to make our community better. The next generation, how you're going to lead in our community. This is what I want to see. This is what I know we'll see here. And I just thank Brother Enoch and Father Mike for putting it together this way. Thank you very much, Auto Woman Thomas. Thank you for coming. Um, we also know that from those who were not able to make it today for this press conference, but they stand behind us, persons like Dr. Carl Bell, who endorses not only the Hip Hop Detox, but he endorses all of us who are working on this initiative, which is to make real change and sustainable change in the community. And when he deals with his seven principles of building resiliency among at-risk youth, we're dealing with not only youth, but we're also dealing with the family. We're dealing with relationships. We're dealing with those who live and reside in our neighborhoods. And I say neighborhoods because sometimes our communities and our idea of community and village seems to resemble more of a trauma center or a triage than it does what a functional community should look like. So we have an idea of where we want to go. We just have to put all of our ideas and solutions together so that we can make change real and sustainable. So I would love to make sure that um, even though our brother T.O. Hardeman from Ceasefire, he wasn't able to come, he did send a representative to represent not only Ceasefire but himself as one of those who are working in the field to interrupt violence all over the city of Chicago. So please give our brother a hand. Thank you, Brother Enoch, Father Flager, Alderman Thomas, and esteemed colleagues. I'm, my name is Shelley Williams, and I represent Ceasefire Illinois. I'm speaking on behalf of T.O. Hardeman, the director of Ceasefire Illinois. And ceasefire, for those that don't know, is an interdisciplinary public health approach to violence prevention. We've worked with Hip Hop Detox in the past, had a really successful uh, gathering while back at the Croc Center that um, we are um, really happy about that. Um, to just piggyback off what Brother Enoch was saying about bringing more of the collaborations into the fold. Um, the work that we do at Ceasefire is pretty simple. We work to reduce shootings and killings. That's our entire mantra. We do not have any other services other than mediating conflicts on the front end. We work with the law enforcement, uh, collaborate with law enforcement in an effort to build a stronger community. Um, um, prevention, intervention methods are outsourced and community mobilization strategy are, are indoors so we can, um, you know, get those numbers down. I can um, report that um, shootings and killings are actually down in the areas that ceasefire implementation, um, the program is in, and uh, we just, again, need the help from the overall communities so we can keep those numbers down. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, the whole idea of wrapping around our common needs, our common issues, that's why we are here at the Peace Palace of the People, Salon Restaurant. We want to thank um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam, Leonard Farrakhan, for allowing us to be in this place right. because the Peace Palace of the People is significant at a time where there's so much chaos, so much turmoil. There are a lot of good, positive stories out there, and we implore the media to please pick up the standard, pick up the work that's being done, and put that work into the rotation of what goes out to the people because we know that there's more going on than just the killing and the shootings and the different things that are going on that bleeds. But we have other stories that must be told. One of those stories comes from an organization, Young Leaders Alliance, and our brother, Brother Jedediah, is a representative of that organization and the work that not only they're doing, but the work that they see that we all need to be involved in. So please give a hand to Brother Jedediah. Thank, thank you, Brother Enoch, all the woman, Thomas, Father Michael Flagg, and everybody that's here. Um, it's really simple. It doesn't get any better unless we make it happen. We can't sit around and hope for someone else to do the work that we need done in our community. 
we got to get active, we got to get unified. And one thing that is so amazing is that it appears that Chicago has reached its darkest hour mm. on certain sides of the city. Mm. And we're losing so much. But this is a perfect time because it's time for the people to realize right. that there is still an American spirit. Right. This great democratic nation can stand up and make its own difference. We don't need anybody to give us anything because we don't need them to take the credit. Mm. But we need the people that are in the city that feel these issues from a ground level to just unify, come together, especially the churches, the religious community. We have to come together and make a difference. Our young people are out here crying for answers, crying for help, crying for solutions. And I applaud people like Brother Enoch, Michael Fleger, and our older woman, and so many others. The work is out here getting done, and I, I am grateful for this opportunity, and it's just time for us to all, everybody, we have to come from out of the homes, come from out of the four walls of the church, come out of our political offices. It's time to get busy. It's going to get better. I've heard a great man once say that your life is the sum total of all the decisions that you make and the consequences that come from those decisions. And one of the things that we want to make sure continues to grow and flourish is all the solutions that we have seen work and even the ideas that have not been implemented, but we know that there's very much a serious truth to those particular ideas. We really want to find ways to get those who are not presently with us in this association or in this process of building unity. We're going to reach out more and more to you so that we could go ahead and strategically make unity real. I say this before bringing up our brother pastor because not only did he travel from the west side to the south side to be part of this press conference and this unifying effort, but he broke those imaginary yet real lines because you have those who say, well, I'm from the west side. I shouldn't care about what's going on the south side. So you have game banging on a lot of different levels. You have division and disunity on a lot of different levels. And until we begin to dialogue and communicate with each other and become honest with one another, mm -hmm. if we do that, then we can make all the different goals that we say need to happen, we can make them happen. But it only comes when we're able to get beyond our comfort zone. So I'm very happy that our brother who brings the funk you know, he's our brother who, you know, he's a he's a pastor also who takes the spiritual and he says, I'm going to give you some hip hop and give you some culture with it to make sure that you understand that what we're doing is timely and that we truly all have to come together in our own diverse ways to bring about the whole loaf of spiritual, mental, moral, spiritual, and economic life. So please give a hand to my brother and our brother, Pastor Phil. Well, I just want to say thank you for this whole opportunity. And adults, we need to stand up. We're not in the schools. We're not uh, walking on the blocks. We're not seen visible. So no, what, what example do young people have if they don't see us doing something? I don't care if you wear a suit. I don't care if you wear Tim's, jeans, or whatever. Just get out there. Our young people are dying for somebody to care for them at an adult level. You don't have to be a kid to love on them. I'm going to share this one little story. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. This man was cutting through Central Park in New York in the 90s. a true story. Trying to cut a shortcut to get home early. The bushes were shaking in this part where he walked by. And he didn't want to be a superhero, but he heard a woman's voice and he said, I got to go home. And he heard this voice and it began to scream out, but it began to get faint. He goes back to the bushes and said, yo, are you in there? Get out. Leave the person alone. And he looked on the other side. And the man ran away. And he said, hey, young lady, you're OK. You can come out. You can come out now. Nobody responded. He said, yo, you can come out. You can come out. On the other end of the voice, a voice came back and said, dad, is that you? Yo, our bushes are shaking. They're shaking, but we're taking shortcuts. Adults, stand up on the west side. We, in, in North Lawndale, we got 187 churches. Right. Come on now. 187? We need to step up. If we need five of them, just five of them stepped up and did some stuff. We would wreck shop on the west side in North Lawndale. Come on, let's be an example. Our young people, as, as, as assumingly and all these, all these negative connotations, they are just tender at heart and wanting some adults to care for them. As soon as you sit down and talk to them, they're like, you want to go play double dutch? I mean, they just really are hungry for that kind of care. So I, I beg you, I beg you, let's step up and do that as adults. Thank you. Lastly, the one weapon that we really want to have discussed, and we thank, you know, the Crusader newspaper, Channel 7, Urbane News, 
um, the other um, your DNA. DNA info. We really yeah. appreciate the media who came to not only cover this, but you know, when you show this or air this wherever you air it, our goal is to get in this battle and use a weapon that I believe those of us on the battlefield, we're doing this in our different pockets. Mm. However, we have to find a way to assemble mm -hmm. so that we can survey what we have and what we are doing. And if we can work together long enough, then the different issues that we say, okay, people aren't able to pay their bills or sustain enough money to pay their rent. And so we have homelessness. People are having difficulty keeping young people in school because of the different problems that exist there. People are having issues with their health. We can go down the list, but the reality is, is that, hey, all of us have part of the solution. But if we do not put unity in this mix, then we will not produce what it is that we say is needed to nourish our communities, nourish our neighborhoods, and make us whole. So in the spirit of not only unity and the spirit of love, but we're saying that we have to now survive and thrive. We have to survive and grow. We have to get beyond the point where we are because we cannot accept the killing mm -hmm. and say it's just something that just happens mm -hmm. all the time. We right, just accept right. it as such. We cannot accept money being squandered and wasted and we say, oh, well, that happens all the time. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. The way it is does not work. Mm -hmm. For majority of us, it does not work. And if you see that this does not work, then please, the unity, this is an example of the uni unifying efforts, mm -hmm. but we can go further than this right. if you decide I'm with this. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot get in contact with myself, um, we're on the internet. Father Flager, he's on the internet. Alderman Thomas, she's on the internet. Ceasefire, Pastor Field, Brother Jedediah, we all are on the internet. So we can make time to communicate with one another so we can work together to unify. If there are any questions from the Crusader or from DNA, please, we'll take your questions now. Um, I, I was wondering, you know, you said it's time to come together. What are some ideas? I mean, you said you have a bunch of these organizations working together, but I mean, do you see some kind of solution that, that you're striving towards? Well, I think um, our brother Shelley, he kind of mentioned it where when he said that um, we work with people that are presently here. We have working relations now, but we have to expand working relations. If we say that there's a hundred some odd churches on the west side and so many churches on the south side, but it seems like we're not working together, then we have to look at are these divisions that we have, are they really necessary in the sense of, okay, we want to stop the killing, we want to improve the economic situation. Well, if we say we want these things, but we are divided, then are we able to really make change happen if we stay divided, seeing it hasn't worked so far, being disunited? Mm. So our goal is to make sure that we help to sustain what we have but build an even greater model of working together so that when you see Ceasefire or you see the Ark of St. Sabina or St. Sabina Church with Father Flag or any of us, you're like, wow, it's not, a, it's not a, um, a shock to see some of us together working together and working in a harmonious way. Because the reality is that the alderman needs help, Brother Jedediah needs help. We all need assistance. We all need help. So this is what we're saying is the solution, because everything that we say is a problem in the city, it only exists because we refuse many times to sit down long enough to work out strategy and to actually be upfront and honest about where we are. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Um, um. I was, I know, but, okay. Oh, uh, Pastor Phil, you said 187 churches on the west side. Uh, I was wondering if you could just flesh out when you say, I mean, if only five of them could stand up. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Well, we got a lot of people who are not working, right? Uh, and maybe as they're pursuing work, and by 3 o'clock, they may not be um, pursuing work. Probably that time, most employers are not necessarily taking applications or resumes. So at 3 o'clock, five people from each of those churches could post up at Farragut High School. You know what I'm saying? Five people from those churches could post up at Curie High, or at, uh, at uh, North London College Prep. And we could, we could post up. And so it's just, it, I mean, it's not rocket science, man. It's not rocket science. So people who want to make things happen, they'll make things happen.
You know, if you want to go to the movies, you'll figure out how to go to the movies. Uh, uh, if you want to, you want peace, you want change, you want unity, you'll figure out how to make it happen. And I think that that urgency is not there, and that's my concern. That's my concern. Can, can I just add one thing on that? I mentioned the fact that I think the other thing is the churches have to understand that the real congregation mm. is not who's sitting there on Sunday. But it's the community that church is in. If a church is in a community, it's a tax exempt organization mm -hmm. in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So they owe that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. right. Right. They owe that neighborhood. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be tax exempt, then you give back to that community. Otherwise, you should move your church. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. One, one question. Um, obviously, we're closing 50 schools in the city. And schools are institutions within the community. And many people feel that we've just destabilized a lot of communities with this move. Um, and there's an expected that we're going to have a, perhaps uptick in violence. Can you, um, can you all please address that? And just in terms of your concerns. Okay, well, I will uh, make sure that all of us who would like to speak on that can. Um, I'm the first person to just really just say quite honestly that Whenever we don't work together, this could have been prevented mm. because we saw these problems a long way off. Um, I believe it was in 1991 or 90, there was 800 some odd murders. Mm -hmm. We had problems like this back then. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the shift of all the different economic and social changes that happens, you know, from in the city of Chicago over the last 10, 15, 20 years, um, we're at a point now where the result is that we have all these schools closing, and I believe personally it's going to force us to either make community real right. or we're going to see bloodshed like we've never mm -hmm. seen bloodshed. Mm -hmm. And right. if we refuse to unify with each other, if we refuse to communicate and talk to one another and knock on doors of our neighbors just to find out, well, who lives next door to me? If we, if we continue with that psychology, then we will see things get worse, unfortunately. So my take on it is, is that this is not something that just abracadabra happened. I believe that there's been a lot going on to make this happen over the course of the last 15, 20 years. And we could probably go even you know, further than that. But since we're at this point now, we can take this challenge and use it as an opportunity to grow. And we can make people begin to see, hey, my neighbor here, yeah, they may be from 10 blocks away, but that's a three-year-old, three-year-old, that's a six-year-old, that's a child. So whatever beef I have, we want to find ways now to do deliberative dialogue, to begin to sit down and do the work that many people don't want to do because they feel it takes too much time. It's too costly. But I believe I read in the news recently that the cost of murder and killings in Chicago is over $2.5 yeah. 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 So that cost is a very pricey yeah. price tag. We have to now do something different. So right. who's the next person like to? Well, um, I will say this, that I'm, I believe Nock is correct, and I've said this a number of times. The issues that we see in education in our communities are not new, and we have to stand up and continue to stand up. I'm going to tell you, some of the schools that I was fighting for to keep open, um, I was the only one from the community fighting. Mm. The, the parents weren't there, none of the other community. I was the only one from the community. There were other people there, but I was the only one from the community fighting. And I did get one of the schools that I was fighting for, I got them off the list. But I t brought in the parents, I brought in administrators and community, and I said, look, this is the way we have to approach it. And that's the way we have to approach the ills that happen in our community. We can't have just one person. We can't just be standing up there saying what's not happened. We have to demand as a community together, as partners, what we want. We need to have a plan A, B, and C. If this closure continues to go, because uh, there's lawsuits in there, if everything happens the way it, it was voted on this week, then what's our plan B? about the buildings, what's our plan B about making sure that safety occurs in and outside those schools? What's our plan instead of fighting between adults fighting between neighborhoods while the kids have to walk through it to get to school? What's our plan? How do we make sure that the parents in area A, now that their kids have to go to area B, that those parents aren't fighting also and teaching their kids to fight? What's our plan as a community? 
We have to have our plans A and B. We, fighting the, we fought against the closures, and in some cases, like the school, Claire Barton, where I won, in some places we won, but where we didn't, if that's going to actually happen, what's our plan so that we're not teaching our children something different, something negative? And then, uh, Pastor uh, Phil and uh, Father Claire, I'd like you to address that because I know you two gentlemen representing the faith community, and Dr. Phil has kind of already spoken on the churches needing to get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, they're talking about putting firefighters on the street for Christ. Right, which right, is, right. It's ridiculous because now Crazy. we're putting the safety of everyone else at risk. Mm -hmm. um, can you all talk about, um, do you have any plans at your church, Father Flag, or are you, Pastor Phil, to use your congregation members to uh, help create safe passages for people when they go to school? Well, we have. We have uh, currently a system in place where we have um, a safe passage uh, in partnership um, with a couple of other nonprofit organizations in Lawndale through Farron High School and through North Lawndale Little Village High School. And it's basically parents come together, just some folks in the neighborhood to come together. So a part of what our objective is now is to connect with the schools that are still there, to connect with the areas where kids will be coming from. And, you know, it's all relational, right? So you've got to get uh, the, into the life of people to know who's what and what's happening and, and what's shifting. And so we have these community meetings and gathering and trying to find out what schools are your kids going to, what are the alternatives, what schools are you are you um, uh, looking into, and so we can find a rhythm and find out how we got to make that happen. We have 50 men in our Hope House ministry that uh, uh, strap up every day and along with other men from our church and, and from the neighborhood, and we post up at different hot spots so that as kids are crossing whatever whether we met with their parents or not, we're keeping things uh, peaceful. So that is already in place, and it's been going in place with schools that were still open at that time, yeah. And, and do you get the information directly from the police department? Do you have a relationship with them so that they can tell you which spots are hot? I know McCarthy can be kind of hard to deal with sometimes. Right, and you just deal with the local commander, and then even beyond the local commander, there's always that person at the front. If you're there in the community, you, I mean, I live in North London, right? Okay. So I'm there, I know the police, I'm, I'm walking through. So all of that is just a natural way of doing life in that, in that context, yeah. Yeah, yeah just... Um, you know, I think what, what Pastor Phil said, and we do it at Savannah, as I tell my members, wherever you live, you know, you the, you the the person on that block, that's your block, and you be the one that, that's out there. You be the one that's sitting on the porch. You want to looking for the kids going to and from. You know, we can put police out there. We can put firemen out there. We can put whoever out there. But the biggest resource we got, and I think that we have not tapped into mm -hmm. citywide, is the people on the block. Mm -hmm. Because they don't just come in eight-hour shifts. They live there. <laughs> you know, they're not coming there for a job and then go home. They live there. Mm -hmm. right there. And until we engage the neighbors on the block, I would love us to see it working from now and we're a long way up here for first day of school. But we say we really engage this city. And we say between now and the first day of school, we go out and really work these block, work these block clubs, work these caps, work these unity. Wouldn't it be awesome if in with st school starting in September, Neighbors came out from around the, the community, mm -hmm. and as kids are going to school, just applaud yeah, them. Yeah, applaud right. our children walking down the block. Encourage them. Support mm -hmm. them. Why can't we engage the community? Why do we always think we got to bring everybody else in right. for safety, everybody else into policing, blue lights, police, mm -hmm. firemen? Use the people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Use the community. They are the most powerful resource, and I don't think we tap into them like mm -hmm. we should. Um, if there are any other questions, um, we just want to leave just by saying this. <coughs> you know, disunity, it continues to happen when those of us who stand in front of the cameras or those of us who work in the community, we say we should work together, but then you don't have the support, whether it's from city, state, federal, um, or those who live in the community and they're not understanding that there's a way to peace and there's a way to war. And if your actions and the things that you do are actions that precipitate warfare, then you're going to continue to see the warfare. But if you say you truly want peace, then we have to sit down and find the way to peace, starting off with the principle of what produces unity and how we can build on that. So this afternoon, we'll have the teens, young adults, they'll be present for the Unwrapped Talent Teen Open Mic and Talent Showcase, and we're going to continue to build with them and their parents and family members and community, et cetera. But our goal is to make sure that when we invite you all out again in July, that we bring those of like minds, all the ones that are not here, bring everybody together 
so that you'll be able to engage in looking at the first model that will be implemented so that when school does start back, we'll have a, a way of wrapping around a lot of these challenges that we know are coming up so that regardless of the schools that are closed and the communities that are at odds with each other, that we do our part. So again, thank you media for coming out and thank everybody else for being present. Thank you. We like peace, right? Yes. We know in Chicago we need peace, right? That's right. So you know that's how I want to greet.